<laughs> All right. Okay, so I have an announcement. So, as you know, I don't have my book today, and I apologize. When I, when I taught you last lecture, I told you it was chapter 18, but it was actually chapter 17. Oh, that's so confusing. Yeah. So 17 should be really easy now. Probably. So this was 17 then? Well, so here's the deal. I gave you the outline for basically 17, 18, 19, and then I think 22. I can't remember. Because that's the way they used to teach it. Wait, so last chapter was chapter 17. Last chapter was really chapter 17. Okay? So that's why. Chapter 18 and 19, I always like to teach together anyway because um, I don't like the way the book teaches it, kind of. I mean, yeah, I really don't like the way the book teaches it. I'll just be honest. Um, and so, but here's, so here's what I'm going to say. I know some of you struggled a little bit with the homework in chapter 18 because you really should have done 17, but that was my fault, not yours. Okay? So for the weekend, I would really recommend that you do 17 and 18 and 19. And we're going to cover all three of those today. But we've already covered we've already covered 18 or 17, really. We've already covered 17. Okay? So you can do the homework on 17, and theoretically, it actually goes through the steps of the outline that I gave you. Of, they only have four. I have six or seven, right? Okay. So I have more steps because I think it's easier to break it down for you. But they, they go through the four steps. And so I hope, especially after you struggled with it over the last couple of days, that 17 is going to be a lot easier. So think 17, no, it won't be. Maybe. You're just pessimistic. Are you looking at me? No. Oh. <laughs> I forgot to say anything. All right. So, but we're going to follow, so the outline I gave you, we're going to still follow that today, okay? But today we're going to focus on the mean, okay? A one sample mean, okay? So it's still 18 or 17, I'm sorry. It's kind of a mix. It's a 17 and 18 and 19. It's going to be all mixed together, okay? Now, I am glad that I did give you that homework on... Um, on proportions because that was really what today's quiz was, right? Yeah. So so that's still going to apply. Okay. All right. So um, in fact, I really should. I'm going to read that. Remember this. This is 17. Um, thing. So I will post my notes afterwards. I think you you'll you'll appreciate that. So there were a lot of things that I didn't cover last time that were a lot of chapter eight change. So let's do this. Oh, no, there wasn't. OK, I'm going to make it up. We're going to make up a problem right here. Um, let me share. OK, the problem is when I start making stuff up, then it gets really dicey. OK? Let's say that the posted speed limit on a road is 45 miles per hour. You think, let's see, the local police tell you the standard deviation is Eight miles per hour. We'll just keep it simple. Okay? Totally making this up. I don't know. This might be an ugly problem or it could be a good one. We'll find out. Okay? You test 25 cars and find the mean speed is 52.3 miles per hour. Is there evidence that people are speeding. Okay. All right. So step number one says what? If you want to look at your notes from Tuesday, that's probably going to be super helpful. I 
identify the numbers. Okay, so the posted speed limit is 45 miles per hour. What do you think we're going to use for that? What letter are we going to use for 45? What did you say? You got to say it louder. P. P? Why P? Population proportion? Is 45 miles an hour a proportion? No. no. So we probably shouldn't use P. What should we use? N. N? What does N represent? Number. N represents the number or the sample size, right? Which would be 25, right? So you're jumping ahead. N is going to be 25. Okay, let's go back to what's 45 miles per hour. What letter am I picking? What'd you say? X, Y, X. Because when you don't know something, you just call it X, right? <laughs> that is not correct. It's not X. We do use X for some things, but not that. We don't use 45 then. We do use 45, and it does matter. Okay, remember? Look at your notes, because there, there should be a hint there. Is it mu? Why is it mu? Um, I can't remember what mu represents. The mean of the population. The mean of the population. Okay, I'll say it this way. What should the mean of the population be? It should be 45. Do you think it is? No. no. Okay. All right. Local police tell you the standard deviation is eight miles per hour. What is eight? The standard deviation, which one? X? X bar? Oh, that's Sigma. Sigma? Should we vote? It says it's X. It says it's X bar. Who says it's sigma? Majority. Who says it's S? Nobody? Okay. Sigma is correct. Okay. That's 25 cars. We already did that one. N is 25. Mean speed is 52.3 miles per hour. What is 52.3? X bar? Why is it X bar? It's the mean? I thought mu was the mean. Of the sample. We use X bar because it comes from the sample of our 25 cars, right? Okay, well done. All right, so we've identified all the numbers except for there's one number that we didn't identify because I didn't tell you what it was. So you assume 0 0.05 is your alpha. I can't type today. But why do we assume that? Why do we assume that? Because Keaton wasn't here last time. Fair coin. It's not because it's the fair coin. Oh, Keaton missed all the notes. You're gonna have to take. You're gonna have to get notes from somebody. I'll, I'll here, actually, I will post my my uh, my notes up today. I should have done that already, but I forgot. Kristen, why? It's your significance level. It's the probability you're willing to be wrong. We're willing to be wrong 5% of the time if we're right 95% of the time. Who makes this up? Pretty much. Yeah, so because you are here the last time. So the most common alpha, you're going to have an alpha of 0.01, an alpha of 0.05, an alpha of 0.10. Do you guys remember what it was for genetics tests? It's like point, point, point 15 zero. zeros and a one. 15, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, remember. seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, <laughs> sixteen. There we go. So it's just basically okay. it's, it's, it's a one. Yeah, this is the probability that you're wrong. Well, the most common that we use on most tests is 5%. Okay? Yeah. So if I forget to tell you, which is actually quite frequent, Assume that it's 0.05. Okay? All right.
So alpha is 0.05. Now step number two is, well, I want to ask Keaton because he wasn't here last time and doesn't have the notes. Yes. Categorical or quantitative. Is that what you were going to guess? No. <laughs> Okay, so are the data, who says the data are categorical? By the way, am I sharing? It looks like I am. Nobody. Who says the data are quantitative? Okay, good. The data are quantitative. Okay. Step number three is find no and the alternative hypothesis. So just as a reminder for Keaton, who wasn't here, the null hypothesis, what are some things we need to keep in mind when we're writing our null hypothesis? There was four things, weren't there? It almost always has an equal sign. Almost always has an equal sign. Here, I'll write them down here. I'll put them at the A, almost always has equal sign. B. I don't know if this is just about the population. It's, it's always, about the population. always about the population. Okay. What? Because you said it was always about population parameters. So does that mean only for the chapter we just did? No, that's for this chapter too. Always about the population parameter. I put parameter on there. Yeah. Population parameter related to each other. Okay. C. There's a statement of no change or difference. The statement of no change, no difference, or we'll assume it's a fair coin. Okay. And D. About the population. I already said that one. Often not stated in the problem. It's often not stated in the problem. Okay, so that makes it a little bit tricky because the alternative, I'll write this over here, the alternative is often stated in the problem. Okay, sometimes people get the alternative and the null mixed up because the alternative is usually stated, whereas the null can be stated but it's often not okay okay so it almost always has an equals so we're going to put an equals there what equals what e equals 45. p equals 45. who agrees with jordan one two three four who disagrees with jordan one only one? Why do you disagree? Isn't it supposed to be mu, not p? Isn't it supposed to be mu? Because p represents proportion. So good job, Eddie. Eddie can. It's mu. Mu for mu. Okay? Mu, not p. Okay? So that's, that's one of the easiest places to mix up. Okay, P we only use for proportions, and 45 is not a proportion. Okay, 45 is a mean. We're going to use the letter mu because it's a population mean. Okay, it's always about the population. Okay, what's the alternative hypothesis? Mu is greater than 45. Why did you say greater than? They're speeding, so we think they're going faster than 45. Okay? All right. All this stuff is in chat. All this stuff here that I put A, B, C, D should be in chapter 17, by the way. Okay? I, I mixed up my numbers there. Uh, number four, step number four is. Find the test statistic. Okay. Now we've got four options here, right? Should we list all the options? Option A was one sample Z that's categorical. Option B was 
one sample. Oh, was it the chi square test? Yeah. Chi square test of independence. Okay. Which is also categorical. Option C was one sample mean Z, and option D, one sample mean P. Okay. So what did you say? And they're both quantitative. Okay, so the nice thing about it, since we answered quantitative on step number two, you've got a 50-50 chance of getting this right. <laughs> it's got to be C or D. Okay? Should we vote? Actually, well, no. How do we know? know. How do we know? Uh, that way you shouldn't vote until you know. Okay? How do you know? Okay? So, how do... I pick D versus T quantitative. Okay? That's actually what we were going to teach you today. Okay? So, now the simple thing to say is chapter 18 is Z and chapter 19 is T. Okay? That's not going to help you on the test, though, is it? Okay? When I mix them all up. Okay? So, how do you pick the T versus the Z? The question that you should ask yourself is, do I know the population standard deviation? Okay. Maybe I'll put that here. Okay. What are the two answers to that question? Yes. yes or no. Okay. If the answer is yes, it is a Z distribution. If the answer is no, it is a T distribution. Okay. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write this on the board because it's easier to write on the board. I'll put it on the spreadsheet too, probably. Okay. So the big question that you should ask yourself, um, do I know population standard deviation and we're assuming that we already know it's quantitative, right? Okay. So the answer is either yes or it's no. Yes means it's a Z distribution. No means it's a T distribution. Okay. All right. So the equation for the Z distribution. Now, remember, we've got the Z formula that we did on Tuesday. Okay. If it's a categorical Z, it's P hat minus P over the square root of PQ over N. Right? That's not going to apply to what we're talking about right now. But I just want you to remember that so we don't get it confused. Remember, this is categorical data. This is quantitative data. Okay? This Z score is going to be X bar minus mu over sigma over the square root of N. Have you seen that formula before? Yes, you have. Okay. If it's a T distribution, it's going to look very similar. It's called T equals X bar minus mu over S over the square root of N. Now, what's S? What were you asking? What's S? That's the sample standard, sample standard deviation. Okay. Now, if we're assuming it's a Z distribution, it's a normal distribution, right? What's the mean of the standard normal distribution? Zero. It's zero, and it has a standard deviation of one. one. Minus one sigma, one sigma. Okay. Now, the T distribution, if I were to draw the T distribution, I'll do the purple. Okay, the T distribution was discovered discovered by a guy named William Gossett. Okay, now he used to work for a beer company, believe it or not, and he didn't want him to have really big sample sizes, and so he created what's called the student. T distribution, he used a synonym, or a pseudonym, not a synonym, a pseudonym, 
um, and then it became known as the student T distribution. Now here's what's cool about the student T distribution. It looks very much like the normal distribution, but it has wider tails. Okay? So the degrees of freedom, Cf stands for degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom equals n minus one. It's your sample size minus one. Why do they call it degrees of freedom? Okay. All right. So it's similar. It's similar to the z distribution with larger tails. Okay. Now, what I would like to do, uh, hopefully we can finish this, and um, you know what, I might have a, a thing here we'll do, okay? All right, so um, we did know our population standard deviation, so we're going to use this formula here, okay? So in our case, we're using option C, I believe it was. Okay, so we're using the z distribution, z equals x bar minus mu divided by sigma over the square root of n. Okay, so underline that. Okay. So those formulas look the exact same, except for the sample standard deviation, the population standard deviation. But they're both the standard deviations, so I don't understand which how they really differ other than that part. Yeah, the reason why they're different is because the t distribution is going to be a little fatter than the normal distribution. Yes, it is. That's the main difference. Yeah, and it's because we're using this because this is usually going to be different than that. Okay. All right, so in this case, if I pick my X bar, um, Casey, I've got your name today. Can you help me punch this through this, the formula here? Yeah, so it's 2.3 minus uh, 45, 45 over 8 divided by 8 divided by square root of 25. Of 25. Okay, so I take the numerator, I divide it by the denominator. Ooh, I got 4.56. What is that? What did I just find? My Z score. I have a big Z score, right? That's off the chart, isn't it? Okay. This. Okay, so let's talk. So step number five. Is what? Find the p value. Oh, I remember. Yes. Good job. Can I tell you a really corny joke? Yes, please. Okay. How do you find a statistically significant sample of drug in urine? Find the p value. <laughs> <laughs> Told you it was funny. <laughs> Saw it on Facebook last night <laughs> from one of my statistics friends. <laughs> All right, anyway, it's better than my morning. <laughs> All right, so find the p value. How do we find the p value? What would Rick do? Because he doesn't want to screw it up with the chart. All right, let's draw the picture here. I'm going to stop sharing when I can draw this picture on the board. Okay. We're drawing the picture. We're drawing a picture of which distribution? The normal distribution. That's the black distribution. What's the mean of the black distribution? Zero. Zero. What did I get? 4.56. I'm way out here, right? Do I want the area on the left or on the right? I want the area on the right. Okay. What is Excel going to tell me? It's going to tell me the left. It's going to tell me the left. The chart's going to tell me the left also. Correct? So what do I need to do in Excel? 
One minus norm S to S. Let's do it. Okay. Now, here's the thing. What if I didn't draw the picture and I just said norm S to S? Okay. If I did that, I would get a really big number. But it's supposed to be one minus that number, right? Okay. Now, here's why is there an E? That's, it's really tiny, actually. That's 2.52 times 10 to the minus 6. Okay? Which means 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 5, 2. Okay? Now, what's step number 6? Right. You know that one minus one minus this, and then you put in the z score. The z -score. Okay. Right. What's step number six? Reject or not. Okay. Now, this is the right answer, correct? So do I re so do I reject or do I not reject? And how do you know? Because Keaton wasn't here and didn't watch the video, or did you? Did you watch the video? So you should have. You'd have done better on your quiz today. I saw it because I was looking at the two of them. So he's like, I don't want to watch him. I'd rather watch funny cat videos. Or <laughs> I watched this video yesterday on Facebook, and it was like stretcher accidents where people would fall on the person they were trying to carry. I saw that. <laughs> they were dropped. Did you see the one where they like tried to pick them up and they kept hitting their head? I saw that. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, that was hilarious. Except for you, didn't you feel so bad for the poor patient? <laughs> the, the opening scene, the guy trips and falls right on the floor. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway, um, reject or not? Reject. Reject. Now, by the way, if you had gotten 0.99, what would you do? You would not reject. Okay, so draw that picture is not only the probability of getting number five right, but number six and number seven. So that's a really important thing to make sure you draw that picture. And some of you are gonna to be too lazy and you're not gonna to wanna to do it and you're gonna get 0.99 and then you're gonna miss the next two parts because you were too lazy to draw your picture. So, so draw it every single time, it'll help you out. I have a question. Okay. What number are we comparing it to? Again? What are we comparing it to? We compare it to, to alpha. Okay, so we're, yeah, we're comparing that to our alpha, which okay. is way back there. So, where's the, so what do we choose when the reject or not? Is it less than alpha? Oh, great question. Who knows the answer to that question? What's he say? He said, how do you know whether to reject it or not? You remember that special politically incorrect if phrase. The if the p-value is low, reject the Oh. oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I didn't make that up. And if that offends you, then just change it from ho to no. It's almost, it's almost rhymes. Okay? So does the p value represent the probability of Yeah, so so one yeah, the one the one way to say this is if people were really going forty five miles per hour. Okay. Let me stop sharing here. Okay. If people were really going 45 miles per hour, the probability that you got them going 52.3 miles per hour when it's when they when they weren't when they were really going 45, that's ridiculously small. Okay. I mean, you would have had to just been really bad and catch every speeder and everybody else is going the speed limit. That just seems pretty odd, right? So we That's only going to happen about two out of 10, 100,000, 10,000, 100,000, two out of a million times that would happen. And then the reason why we compare it to alpha is because it's lower than what we wanted. Yeah, we said we're willing to be wrong 5% of the time. Okay, we would be wrong two out of a million times. I would feel pretty, in fact, here's what I would say. 
if my p value is that low, I might even use the A word. The A word, and I might accept that people are speeding. Okay? So why do we even check the trans? Okay, so remember, it to be it's a good question. It's a really good question. Okay, why do we reject? Because remember, we always assume that the null hypothesis is true until we're proven otherwise. Okay, we've rejected the null hypothesis was everybody's going 45 miles an hour. Okay, you found 25 cars that were going 52.3. You reject that people are going 45. You think the alternative is unlikely true. So step number seven is right conclusion in English not statistician. Okay. Can you explain this part? Like I don't know whether to know if we if it's there is enough data or not. Oh, that's a good question. Okay. So yeah, how do you know? Okay, so the conclusion should say something like there is or is not evidence that whatever you were asking about. Okay. What are we asking about in this class? People are speeding. Now we have to decide, is there evidence that people are speeding or is there not evidence that people are speeding? There is evidence of speeding. There's evidence that people are speeding. Really strong evidence because I got a ridiculously small p-value here. This is tiny. So what, when does it go from low to high? Like what point, like when you Oh, he used the A word. Yeah, so so how you decide that's where your alpha is, okay? Okay, let's say, for example, okay, let me finish his question and I'll try to answer yours. Let's say, for example, that he got a p value of 0.15. Okay, you did all the math, you got a p-value of what, 0.15. What would you conclude here? Yeah. Do not reject. Okay, and then your conclusion would be there is not. So, so here, yeah, so here's a good, good way to remember this. If you do not reject, there is not enough evidence. Okay? Now, for example, you know what I might be able to do? Let me do this here again. Let's say that instead of 25 cars, I only tested five cars. That's not very many, right? But I was bored and they didn't come by very often or so. I don't know why you're worried about speeding if there's only five cars. <laughs> okay, let's see what happens. Okay, all my calculations are gonna automatically update here, okay? Oh, it still shows pretty significant evidence. Okay, we're going to change this to two cars. Okay, that's good. You only check two cars, which is just kind of silly. What kind of an experiment are you going to check it to? But whatever. It's illustrating a point here. Okay, so we still, with the two cars, somehow I got 52.3 miles per hour. Okay, I ran all my calculations. I'm 1.29 standard deviations to the right. Okay, my p value is about 10%. I compare that to my alpha. You always, alpha. you always compare it to your alpha. My alpha is 0.05 unless I tell you something different. So is my p-value low? No. So I do not reject the null. Okay. So there is not enough evidence that people are speeding. Only check two cars though. That's kind of silly, right? Okay, so yeah, you'd probably say, well, maybe they are speeding, but check more cars. So the more evidence, the more cars. So the more evidence, yeah, the, the bigger your sample size, yeah. So, and that's why we want, so let's say, for example, you check two cars. I mean, that's, that's silly, but let's just, let's just go with it for a minute. You check two cars, they were going 52.3, and you said, yeah, I don't have enough evidence they're speeding, okay? Uh, everybody's going to be like, we'll check more than two cars. Okay. Um, 
but yeah, they could be speeding, but I just don't have enough evidence. Okay, so sample size plays a big role. In this. And so that's why we would not accept, we would not accept the null hypothesis. It might be say, you know what, there, I accept that people are going 45, even though I found, found both cars going 52. Yeah, 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 that could have happened or something. Okay, question. So when we did on Tuesday, you said that the proportion one only works when NPQ is greater than or equal to 10. Yes. So is there a rule for this one? Is there a rule for this one? Yes, and I actually broke the rule, but I was I made it up in my head. Okay, what do you think the rule should be for this one? How big does your sample size have to be? Greater than 30, okay? So even when I had my 25 here, I broke the rule, didn't I? Okay, now here's what I will say. You could have, get, you could have gotten away with 25 if the problem stated it is known the speed of cars comes from a normal distribution. Okay. If that phrase was there, I could have actually gotten away with my two, although like who in their right mind would do that? Okay. Is that the same then for the proportion that it can be less than 10? Okay, so yes, yeah, so, so, so here's the thing. Your um, quantitative N is greater than or equal to 30. This one quantitative also N greater than or equal to 30. The one sample Z, this is NPQ, greater than or equal to 10. We'll talk about that. That's got a different rule altogether. It's a very different test. Okay, We're not going to do that one for a while. Okay, So we've got about four minutes left. I only did one problem. <laughs> so here's what I'm going to say. I've kind of introduced you to the T distribution, but not really. So the good news is you only have to do, so you, you can redo chapter 17. And 18. Okay, I think 17 will make a lot of sense because, for one, we've gone over it for two days. Okay, I know in the book they've only got four steps. I want you to still use my seven. I think it's going to make it a lot easier for you. But yeah, chapter 17 kind of goes over the whole outline that I did, only to do it in four rather than seven. I think the seven's better. Okay, so. Um, Anything else you need to say? Wait. So, yeah, so as far as homework due on Tuesday, just do 17 and 18. And I will probably post some more uh, Excel homework for, uh, I'll try to keep it as a Z, not a T. Um, although those will get, those, so those are going to be really easy to mix up. Um, okay, so when we did the proportion and mean on a different thing, it was really confusing to tell when you use which formula. On the confidence intervals? Yeah. yeah. So, so here's the nice thing, okay? As far as using categorical, categorical, quantitative, quantitative, okay? Um, the rules for the confidence intervals are exactly the same as the rules for the hypothesis tests, okay? So if you pick a categorical, the confidence interval is going to be p hat plus or minus z times um, square root of pq divided by m. Okay. If you're doing a one sample z, it's going to be x bar plus or minus z times sigma over the square root of m. Okay. I will teach you the t. Well, here I'll teach it to you right now. It's super easy. I haven't taught you the T yet, but it's it's almost identical to the Z, only I changed that to a T. Okay, we'll 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 talk about that on Monday, but that's your preview for Monday. Okay, and then the chi-square test doesn't exist. Okay, there is no confidence interval for the chi-square. Okay. Yeah, we're going to do that on Tuesday. Oh, okay. We'll talk about the T distribution. Yeah, yeah. So the, it's going to be quite different, actually. But, but I mean, everything's about the same on step five, right? Yeah. Okay.
Yeah, I mean, yeah, your T distribution, there'll be some different things. So, and in fact, well, I'm going to give you your book back before I forget. Because uh, I didn't think they gave you a table. That was what I was looking for, Robert, really quick. Um, yeah, so chapter 19 is going to be the T distribution. And, oh, I didn't see it. but anyway, I'll look at my book when I get home. Okay. Any other questions? Quiz will be on 17 and 18. So I will I, I, I will throw this at you, okay? I'm gonna probably mix up your P hat and your X bar. So no both. Okay. So know when to use this formula and when to use this formula. That'll be potentially confusing. But you'll be smart. I know you will. I have faith in you guys. You're going to ace my quiz on Tuesday. Okay. I say if the Red Sox win the World Series, then we don't have to take quiz. <laughs> <laughs> if the Red Sox win, maybe I'll give you an extra point for your name again. That would be great. So um, now that you told us this was a confidence interval, so now if we were just like to go back to like pretend we didn't learn this yet, what you told us that part, so it will always be the p hat formula if it's categorical yes it's so like if you were to pull out a test well no mm -hmm. so far the answer is yes i'm going to teach you a new test that's categorical that's not p hat okay um but so far the answer is yes but so will, like if we knew this for this test it would have helped if you knew this for this test it probably would have helped oh, okay All right. yeah. I, yeah i don't know when to use p hat or well, now we know. Now, I, yeah, yeah, if it's categorical. Categorical. Yeah. My question, I just have a question on how uh, you knew how many zeros. Uh, there was something with the E. Yeah. Will you explain so that to me? Let's put this back here. So if we've got 25 on my thing here, in fact, we'll change this back the way it's supposed to be. So you see this, it says 2.52 times E06. Yeah. Okay. So that's, so I wrote it here on the board. That's what that's that That's what the E minus 06 means. This is, means 10 to the minus 6. That's okay. Okay. And you should see that on your calculator, too. All right. If you get a small number like that. Okay. Because then I was like, wait, we're rejecting it, but it's bigger. And yeah, yeah. You have to make sure you're paying attention to the E. Yeah, that E06 is just. I've just never seen that before, so I was like, oh, yeah. Not on your calculator? No. Oh, really? I don't think so. Maybe yeah, you should have. Maybe I just haven't been paying that good Yeah, you just haven't had a math class for a while, huh? I, yeah. That's why. It's you haven't seen it in a while. Haven't seen it since high school. Yeah. Yeah. That's why. So okay. Thank you. You're welcome.